<laughs> and because Sibia is the mother of this show <laughs> and the mother in uh, this house, <laughs> yes. we'll let her do I the on, uh, we'll let her do the honors. First of all, uh, this is exciting because this man is Googleable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very important. Okay. Uh, very, very. Uh, uh, not, ju uh, uh, not just Googleable. I'm he telling you. Uh, he has uh, a Wikipedia page. And that's the thing. Yeah, and that's you the see, thing. That, that, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you <get it? laughs> and, and I want to read you what Wikipedia actually says. Uh -huh. If you know, you know. Okay? Yeah. We're talking about none other than Mr. Lawrence Muganga, who is the Uganda, who's a Ugandan-Canadian scholar, mm. digital mm. economy educationalist. Uh, what did I say, Mark? Yeah. Scholar. Mm. Uh, edu edu what, eh? Ed educationist. There you go. Yeah, Academic yeah, yeah. administrator who serves as the vice chancellor of Victoria University. He is the author of You Can't Make Fish Climb Trees. I want to know about this one. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> you must welcome Prof. Lawrence Muganga. Welcome to the morning switch. Welcome to meet the boss. We're glad to meet you. Thank you for having me. And uh, uh, but you talked about the mother of the show. Yes. Uh, you can't have the mother of the show and then you say things like bosses. <laughs> <laughs> Mothers are always bosses. Mothers are always bosses. Yes. Yeah. You guys have made me sound old. Here. Uh, yeah. it's, such a, it's such an honor. Thank you very much for honoring the invite to be here. First of mm. all, uh, I, I think this is your first time to be on the morning switch. Actually, yes. 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 Uh, and I'm um, uh, really privileged to be here, uh, uh, uh. Uh, especially uh, listening to the hits you've been uh, playing. Yes. Radio yeah. Call is yes. the song we played before we came on. And guess what? When the song started, Professor said, in his own words, I quote, I used to love that song. What happened? Because I took, I, I had taken long to even listen to it again. Ah. So, until I came here, uh, yeah. then you guys played it. Surprise, and, uh, surprise, I surprise. I, wanted, I, I even wanted to tell you, can we cancel my <laughs> present? <laughs> <laughs> Just play the music. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So what we do on Meet the Boss is we get into uh, the fun bit of it. But of course, uh, a little more inspiring because we are talking to so many people out there, so many yeah. young people who want to be the next Professor Mugangas mm. in this nation and of course outside on this beautiful continent mm. of Africa. And uh, let's begin with a simpler one. When we were uh, starting the show today, we actually uh, said, asked the question, I know you're an academician. You're also an academic administrator. Uh, you call it what? Education. Education. Uh, scholar. Uh, 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 mm. Mark is attentive. Mm. Uh, uh, and, and we asked, <laughs> if you went back to the younger you in education, yeah. what level of education would you want to attend and enjoy the most? Uh, Mark said... Primary. Primary school. Mm. I say varsity. Uh, uh, she says university. Mm -hmm. uh, high school, I'm not sure. Me, my, my reasons are personal for primary because our PE, we used, the girls used to remove dresses, then the boys would remove shirts. <laughs> so I see my OGs today and I say we need to go back. So, so what level of education, <laughs> Professor? Because you have been uh, <laughs> attuned to this situation. <laughs> it cannot happen. <laughs> and, and, and today they have this thing of sportswear. Ah, but, but what level of education would you want to go back to and enjoy? I, I think primary because that's a stage that I really suffered a lot as uh, a learner. Uh, I, I, would I would really love to redo that and uh, maybe I would hope it has changed because that time uh, having uh, a six-year-old, seven-year-old being beaten at, uh, at the free will of everyone, you know, mm -hmm. it is something you don't want to see happen. So I would love to enjoy it at that time, right? So primary would be something I want to go back to and uh, maybe even change it if I can. Uh, yeah, primary is what you want to go by. That would be yeah. interesting. But which primary school is this we are talking about? Uh, you're talking to someone who has been in almost 17 schools. So, 17? So where do I start? Yes. <laughs> yes, what? I know. <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> is that, is that even I li yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like the spin. What a social capital. Yes, but I don't see my OGs or OGs. So... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. So I see a few. Uh, you're so right. Let me tell you, Professor, just before you leave that OB thing, mm. the, the time I went to Makerere, I tried looking for my OBs in the university. Mm. I didn't see one until third year. I met some guy called Johnson around uh, the <laughs> guild canteen. We said hi to Johnson. I said, Johnson, so you're here in Makerere? Johnson said, no, no, no. You know, it's a shortcut to Chikumi Chikumi. <laughs> so uh, it's what I remember. <laughs> I'm just use. passing. I'm yeah, just passing through. <laughs> 17 years. 17 schools. Schools. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 17 wow. schools, actually. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the thing. It can be uh, really tormenting, but uh, 
was not my uh, wave. Uh, sometimes socioeconomic conditions had to come in, right? So when your parents move uh, in pursuit of something that is going to work for the family, then you end up enrolling in another school. I, uh, but but uh, most interesting or depressing uh, experience I've ever gotten is there is a time in one of the schools uh, where I was the only primary six student. Only one person. Wow. In short, you're saying in that class you were the class monitor? <laughs> the, 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 the student, the, student. the mm. one who writes those making noise, and the one who making noise at the same time. Now, just, just, <laughs> just, just imagine the report card. You remember they used to rank students, yeah. number one, number two. Uh, one out of 50. Yeah, I, I enjoyed being number one. <laughs> one out of one. <laughs> <laughs> Always a winner. Doesn't <laughs> matter how the exams have come out. Uh -uh. You no. are number one. Number yes. One. Was and it a school I, just I, starting I, or what? I go back to my mother with my uh, my head up, number one. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, my parents moved to a place. I think this is uh, Vukoto East Constituency uh, in Masaka. And uh, the school had classes up to primary five. And I was going to in primary six. So the other school was 20 kilometers away from uh, where we used to live. So uh, so the teacher said, you know what, I'm going to help you teach him alone. And indeed he did. So eventually uh, I moved on to another school uh, where they could accommodate P7 students. And we used to walk 20 kilometers a day. So Wow. You can imagine. The stories we never get to know when we see people in certain places. No, exactly. 20 mm. kilometers every 20 day. Kilometers yeah. Come yeah. rain, come any dry, you call it any drought or something, you, have you to. will walk. Mm. Wow. No? Looking, looking, looking at uh, your history in school, 17 schools, is, is this why you're such an educationist now? Uh, it's because you've, been, uh, you've really been through school. You know, to me, education is personal. Mm. I would never want to create an environment of learning that is similar to everything I have ever witnessed. Mm. You can even think in a better way that this is good P PTSD. Mm -hmm. That uh, I am obsessed to changing something that is all wrong about school. Mm. So, so yeah, it, it is a motivator too. Uh, but things have even gotten worse. So, I... Uh, so in comparison to how it was before and where it is now, mm. you're saying it's, it's gotten worse? It is gotten In what worse. way? Uh, in the way students learn right now. Uh, but, but Prof, uh, yeah. before you answer, you're, you're saying things have gotten worse. Mm. Do you know how mm. we are beaten? <laughs> now children have rights in their schools. Do you know how we are beaten? Yeah. It was even worse if your mother is a teacher. And she says, let me beat you after all, I gave birth to you. Yeah. <laughs> it was different. People used, you, you moved 20 kilometers. I mean, now schools have vans. They pick kids up from home and take yeah. them to school. Yeah. Well, it's a bit earlier, but it, I mean, it's understandable. People now have sports where people have, they take them for trips and swimming. Ah. And they change I'm sports where they have like uh, six uniforms. Uh -huh. One for Monday. S so so oh, yes. I, I don't understand yeah. when you say things have gotten worse. And so, more expensive, all you added. So uh, in my days, you would toil. You do, you go through all those things, mm -hmm. but maybe you would end up finishing that cycle with something to do. Today you finish 16 years, 23 years, and you go back to your parents and become a dependent. Mm. So you have toiled for nothing, you live for nothing. Mm. So what is worse? Mm. Yeah. Hey, no, I think it yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Professor yeah. also... No, I say so he's a professor. Mm. <laughs> professor <laughs> talked about the things that uh, he's passionate about, changing things. Mm. And I, I honestly think you, sh you should also... Help me. I may remember some things you should change, Professor. Mm. I remember there's a school I went to. I sat senior mm. four keep from that mind, school. Keep in mind, Mark, I'm not the Minister of Education. Yes, mm. but you can <laughs> at least stand because we have seen you stand for so many things and they've come to pass. Me, I sat senior four in some school, Professor. The grades I got, I thought. The because he, normally when you fail, really, you go back to. <laughs> advised it to. Mm. I, I mean, I went back to the same school so that he can give me a, a vacancy for senior five and six. Mm. The class teacher, the head teacher looked at my results saying, ah, we cannot admit him. But I said, but you're the school. Who, you, 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 that who, who gave me these marks? No, I think <laughs> it was more on the student than, yeah. the, than the institution. Uh, but Mark, there is always uh, uh, light at the end of the tunnel. 
And uh, why, am, why am I saying that? Uh, in Baganda, I don't know if Father is in Uganda here, my, other than myself, right? Mm. Uh, they say in Sebula Mirambo, right? Meaning, some people have to suffer for others to see good. Mm. Today, uh, I think, uh, Olevo, you talked about Olevo, those kids will never see an F again. Yeah. That has gone. We've talked, we have fought, we have done what. And please, and let the, minist the Minister of Education uh, and the entire ministry, you know, they have listened and they have done what is right. So no more grading anyone's child as a failure. So you can go back to Olive if you want. <coughs> Rooney, I think now I've gotten the answer to the question. <laughs> I want I want Olive. <laughs> <laughs> I want Olive now because I'm not going to be that failure. Uh, I tell you, we'll take a break right now. But of course, when we return, we're in conversation with Pro, uh, Professor Lawrence Muganga, who is the Vice Chancellor of Victoria University, a man whose heart is after changing the academic uh, atmosphere, sphere of this country. Eh? Sphere. Eh. Uh -huh. it sounded like severe. How, <laughs> how, how do we spell? How do we spell sphere? One, two, three. HP. Uh, so do you want, to you want me to continue? <laughs> Do you want me to continue? All level. Ah. <laughs> no, Christian, his father, Muslim. I can imagine you yeah. enter your house the, in the morning, you say, yeah. praise the Lord, mommy, assalamu alaikum, daddy. That's what it is. <laughs> that's a cocktail. Because that's a thing. Uh, yeah. Because, that's because thing. at 3 a.m., hey. mommy's a rabababa. <laughs> at 6, Muzayala Akbal. 27 after 8 o'clock. Good morning. Meet the boss it is mm -hmm. on this Thursday on the morning switch. And who are we meeting today? Is the Vice Chancellor of Victoria University, Professor Lawrence Muganga. Like I did say earlier on, a man who's had his after changing the academic atmosphere mm. of this country, of this continent, of this world. But definitely change for the better. A man who previously walked 20 kilometers mm -hmm. to go to school, yeah. now he drives to go and administer. Or watch the gear, I tell you. <laughs> so, you don't lose hope. Ah, that's the thing. Uh, but, yeah. but, uh, but anyway, life is a journey. All we need is transport. Talking about journey, though, that's exactly the question I want to ask. Uh, mm. Looking at your academic journey, I mean, you went from uh, Makere University, mm. and then after that, obtained, that's where you obtained your bachelor's, and then your master's. I uh, went on to Canada as well you got your doctorate PhD already by then uh, University of uh, Alberta uh, am I pronouncing that correctly even yeah, yeah. Um, and, and then of course uh, postdoctoral program it, 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 at it, it, Harvard it, 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 University yeah. ah, she's she's it right, yeah. she's, yeah. I mean <laughs> it's it's a lot uh, you, you, no, you're I, uh, I went to the University of Alberta did another master's in education uh -huh. so the same university I did, I did a PhD in education so headed to Harvard, did the doctoral training in education again, mm. higher education, mm. and been to 51 countries trying to study and support education system. Yeah. Uh, I miss one thing that uh, in those countries I've never been there as a person on vacation, so mm. been working. So, and, and so, so what would you say then you've learned from all these other countries in terms mm. of education and how are you applying all those things that you've gathered over time uh, to where you are now? Simple, uh, that in our system here we reward a lot of sitting in the, cl in the classroom and uh, remembering than productivity. Hmm. So we don't re reward creators. We don't even need them. We don't pay attention to making more creators and more producers. Uh, we rather uh, have people who can sit for the longest time possible in one's building or a four-cornered room called a classroom. And later on, we give them a certificate of uh, remembering and uh, they end up doing nothing. <laughs> I, I think I share a mind with you, Professor, because even me at university, I never used to go to class yet. Uh, for to, you, to, for, to you to was, uh, for you, it was a different reason. No, no, me, I would do, I would wait for exams. Yeah, what, and, uh, what were you studying? Uh, information technology. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, uh, see, because you call guy, we have been there. <laughs> and that's the thing. <laughs> that's and that's the, the thing. thing. <laughs> now that you mentioned, pro Prof, that you have actually realized that the education system is so much inclined on people sitting and then being just rewarded with paper, mm. other than creating creators and producers mm. are there any changes you've caused to the university uh, i'm being particular victoria yes, university victoria university yeah. delighted you, you even asked that so uh let me 
you should be thankful that maybe you did information technology and you didn't study that by correspondence. Uh, some of us, uh, when we were at Makerere, and uh, I remember being introduced to co some com introduction to computers and something. So we studied that by correspondence. In other words, you would, there were like 20 students studying that on one computer and they would point at it. Wow. Then we got 80%. We've never touched a computer. So now what, are, what have we done as, uh, at uh, Victoria University? So th there are so many things. One, we've realized that uh, the world we are in is revolving or uh, dominated by the digital economy. And we've made sure that uh, in our university, no one comes out when they can't fit in the digital economy. Mm. So learning is digitized. Assessment is digitized. Everything about learning at university is digitized. So while others uh, get out of uh, their respective universities when they are professionals in handwriting, a skill that no one needs, I can see all of you, whatever you're, you're writing, you have your phones, you, no longer, you don't even have a paper and pen. So in so many universities, it's a book, a paper, and a pen. Yeah. So, but when you go to work, your supervisor wants a report that is uh, really typed, right? So those skills, like we, we have really changed learning. And number two, you can only sit in our classroom for only 15 hours a week. The rest of the hours, we want you to be doing something. I I'm yes. going back to university. <laughs> <laughs> yes. anyway, yeah. And uh, it is, you cannot. Like, so if, if a week has seven hours, we need you 15 in our classroom. The rest of the hours, uh, 55, please do something with your life. By the time you graduate, while the world there, the labor market needs you to have uh, two, three years of experience, you have the years of experience. So you can create something. You can mm -hmm. do something. Probably you don't need a job as it is actually visible, uh, very visible today. Mm -hmm. Like most of our students, they don't graduate looking for a job. No, because for the last how many years they have been at school, they are working somewhere. So that's the difference from uh, going to uh, another university and then you get out when you are a career job searcher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah. later on you graduate into uh, this career of uh, unemployment. Mm. Three years down the road, you have even given up looking for a job. Yeah. So... It is really frustrating. And, uh, and then what we have also done that is interesting that you didn't see in your IT days, uh, probably in your curriculum you never even encountered anything called AI. Okay, mm. at that time. Mm. Nothing. All we knew actually, was the programming that methodology. That was my next question actually yes. about AI. How you think integrating AI into mm. uh, the university uh, is working for you? So uh, this... If you look at what is happening today, uh, you can run away from it. You can even hide under the table, but you can't make it go away. Mm. So, and uh, people tend to say that AI is coming to take away our jobs. No, there is nothing called AI in the physicality of Uncle Mark or the, uh, Victoria or Rory. No, anyone who has mastered that craft that AI brings is going to replace you. So we have to expose this to our students such that they are better than any graduate in this country or in east africa that they can make ai work for them mm. okay so we ha we, are, we have made sure that now every curriculum run at victoria university has uh, ai into it has uh, environmental management into it uh, in other words where we are going, you cannot graduate from Victoria University if you don't have uh, AI-related certifications, like five of them. Mm -hmm. So in other words, that's when we will know that you are ready to really change the world. You know, by simply talking about change makers, you, know, you can change the world. Mm -hmm. You can use the latest technology to work for you, to do something tangible. You don't have to look for a job in this world. U Uganda is very virgin. It has everything. It's just the... the the miseducation you may ma ma you may ma uh, have had somewhere that is not really allowing you to do something, and we are trying to change that. Mm -hmm. Well done, S great stuff right there. Uh, and I mean, 
when you just listen to Prof talking about education and uh, the changes being made, you surely can tell it comes from a heart that is very passionate. No, absolutely. Very I'm, passionate. I'm actually yeah. curious about something, even with that passion. Mm. Is this a reason why you integrated uh, climate change education uh, as well in every course, or and as well as just the experiential learning? Do you think that this could be adopted by other universities, or do you think we're still a long way to go before they adopt experiential learning? I, uh, I mean, first of all, uh, it has to be very, very intentional uh, for one to change their mindset, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we are not a, a government-aided university. We thrive and depend on tuition paid by students. Uh, so a, a university that is supported by government, taxpayers' money, you have no excuse, mm. okay? I'll mm -hmm. give you an example. Uh, why are you spending five, five billions a year in making sure that you buy uh, answer booklets for students to write exams? Why in the world, in this digital world that we live in? Yeah. So, and that is in five years, five times five, that is 25 billion. Do you know how many teachers you would have paid? Do you know how many like, uh, increments in terms of salaries you would make in people's lives, right? So do uh, you know how much money we've saved by saying, okay, exams, digital, okay? No paper, you're saving the environment, you're saving trees mm. by use, not using paper. Uh, teachers, they used to really bust uh, around with red pens and black in their pockets. You cannot work at Victoria University with that kind of mentality. No, it's not going to happen. You have to grade a student transparently and uh, once they have done their exam, uh, they will submit, it comes to the teacher's photo. You go there, read there, you have a rubric or uh, what we call uh, a mark sheet or something, mm -hmm. a marking guide. So then you assess and then you provide notes and the student should know why they got what they got mm. transparently. But there is no paper, so why we in integrated all those things? Now, look at what the, envi what the environment looks like. Mm. It needs saving. And no one is going to come from elsewhere and s start saving the environment for us. We have to do something. Uh, when we talk about AI, blockchain, quantum computing, when we talk about uh, immersive technologies, are we just going to read about them mm -hmm. and the people are way ahead and Uganda is lagging behind? Who's going to do those things for us? Mm -hmm. We have to start somewhere. So, and if you're not giving this education to these young people, then you are the number one enemy to this country. Yeah. So we are not going to be that. So it is doable. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to have the commitment and change the mindset and don't think that the education that worked for me uh, when I was going in those 17 schools walking 20 kilometers is the you education of the child of today. It yeah. can't happen. Sure. Yeah. L let's go back a little bit uh, to the 17 schools now uh, and the 20 kilometers. What Do you want to buy one? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if I could, <laughs> I surely would. Uh, but w what kind of a, you know, a, a young boy and student were you? Now that you had to move, of course, dependent on if your parent has been shifted to a different location, of course, you had, uh, uh, you had no choice but to follow. But w what kind of a young boy were you? Were you the playful one? Were you the one that would be so silent in class? Were you the one that said, I caused the trouble, then first hold it back, then the other guys? Uh, <laughs> me memories of the yes. 17 schools. Let me tell you one of the memories that will never escape my... Uh, actually, I'll tell you two, but let me start with this one. I have... Uh, I think I was in Vulova High. Somewhere. Where is it? Mitiana Road? Yes. Yes, mm. somewhere. And now they are two levels. Vulova Second and Vulova High. But Vulova High School. So we're in this class, and I have a friend of my, my uh, desk mate. You know those desks? Yes. Mm. They even have the seating. And, and where are you yes. right from? Uh, this guy stands up, uh, Muchibi. His name was Muchibi. I'm looking for him, actually. Wherever he is, he should look for me. This guy, <laughs> Muchibi, uh, if you're listening in, yeah. <laughs> the professor is looking Muchibi for you. You already have a, a scholarship. Is, uh, talk uh, about social capital. Uh, yes. I lost my social capital. But, uh, <laughs> in Muchibi. But, uh, in Muchibi. <laughs> so, but uh, I know he's alive. So, yeah. uh, Now, what happened? The teacher asks a question. This guy stands up. It's a practice. You have to stand up and answer questions. Uh, when he I had, you remember those nice pens? 
Yes, that had, was, that had stripes. Victoria will not remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there were right? strips in the, yeah. uh, with the blue and, and white. white and yes. with the blue cover. So when he stood up, so I just now had to place the pen upward, facing upward. The <laughs> and then when he sat, he sat on it. <laughs> Oh, oh my word. You can imagine. <laughs> oh my goodness. So. I am sure Muchibi made a certain sound. He punched me. <laughs> oh, in like class. Like a punching bag. Oh, wow. You know? And the teacher didn't even know what had happened. Everyone didn't know what was going on. <laughs> so this guy punched me. In his face. Like and then after that, the teacher asked why. And when the teacher came to know, he started from where Muchibi had. And he started So. So you can oh imagine what kind of child. <laughs> 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 I am very sure Mochibi made a very rare noise. <laughs> Do you know, sitting on a, first of all, a nice pen was sharper than the big one. Uh, very yeah. sharp like this. Yeah. And longer. So, you so the other experience was in P3. Mm-hmm. P3, P4. There's a school called uh, Chivisi Primary School. That is in uh, Kalungu East Constituency today. Um, also came with food. You, you know that guy, Cham River. <laughs> you know that place of Cham River, right? Beyond the Cham River, there is a place called Miwura and Salah. That's where that school is. So uh, now, I didn't like school was a problem for me. Like what was happening? I decided that, that we, we created a playground, a soccer playground in the forest somewhere. Me and my friends. So every time I leave home very early in the morning. Me and my friend, we branch off to the to the forest and we start playing. We start playing soccer, and then my my uh, these other kids who went to school they come with homework. So we look at homework and then we copy it in our books, and then we get red pens and we mark ourselves. We go back home. <laughs> <laughs> but one day, I don't know who told my mom. Like we had spent like four days without going to school. When I left going to school, so I am presuming she started walking behind us we branched off i think she branched off as i was playing you know you have sides <laughs> facing the other side so i was playing going the other side before i know she, someone is grabbing my hand turning she's my mom my friend i was bitten <laughs> so they took me to school so she blind they they, they said are oh, you blindfold him told me to she's but they told every teacher, five of them, to first beat me for missing school all those days. And then four teachers completed their task. She started beating me up. So from that day, I've never missed a class. I thank you. I, I, I think we thank mommy. Yeah. No, this is, and that's the thing. So mothers are the bosses. Uh, yes, yeah. it now makes sense. We'll take a break, and of course, when we return. Ah. From, from this football, we'd love to know what team does Professor support? Also, was he looking at playing at that time, saying this school arrangement might not work, but I might be a footballer and make more money? All that. <laughs> I met the boss when we return as the morning switch. Good morning. That many, 13 minutes remaining until the hour of 9 o'clock. It's uh, the morning switch on 106.1 X Radio. Throwback Thursday, indeed. And uh, we're in the moment of meeting the boss. Today, we are meeting the Vice Chancellor of Victoria University, Professor Lawrence Muganga. Sons of Nicki Minaj. What, what music do you listen to, Prof? I, I, I know, I heard you say you play music on your phone. Uh, what kind of music do you listen to when you're having hard times? What kind of music do you listen to when it's the happy moment? Hopefully, I don't get uh, depressed when I say my uh, choice of music. Uh, uh, if you are in this country, I am Tim Kadonkam. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, I, 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 I actually used to sing those songs. Like you, you would be surprised. Sample. Yeah. I want to see the enter. Sample. Who, who's uh, like? You, do you remember a gentleman called Basude? Yes. Mm. Haman. Mm. Mm. There's one th song he had. is called Bas Dunia. Mm -hmm. And it is very prophetic. Okay. You know, there's content. Uh -huh. Leave alone these guys who sing things just because they just want to make noise. Mm. Mm. Tugum, 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 yeah, tugum. And you were wondering, like, is he attacked by the other thing you were talking about? Ma your mother was looking for in you. So, so uh, the guy would say, Mungu wako wade chota genda kudam kulava. Ye mungu wako yimbire vinyo matenga vikuru. Tena visenge kanevi wama makuru. Kanyimbe mu yolombo jamazina. 
kari na ngewe ndiva o waliva o kunyorwa ya david dao tebenka na nkana chochi kuru and i'm sure that song was about six seven minutes no it is around 14. and the guy does not repeat a word no a whole movie <laughs> like he doesn't repeat anything but these guys can they even have a chorus do you know and these guys may, when they come to perform before you they make you sing the no, song they are even <laughs> competing to have a song of uh, one one and uh, one minute and 52 seconds no 14 14 minutes, minutes. 14 minutes. <laughs> that's when you music know. was real music by the way yes. yeah, yeah. 14 you know, minutes and that's 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 the that's what that, those are verses only, no chorus. And, if, some, that's a whole and if you are a planned child of that time, you have a walkman. Uh, uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yes, you understand something called uh, a walkman. Yes. You can Google. We, we, uh, a walk- no, I, I had one. You I had one. A walkman yes. would. Yes. It, was it the same? Ah. The same as the one that used to have a CD. Uh. Okay, no, uh, uh, oh, nange mbade wo nyo nyo. If you want to rewind that song and you don't, uh, you don't have any. There's a tape, a tape, and a yeah. pen. And pen, a pen. Comes in so, so you remove the tape and yes. first, and yes. then usually there was one who had the technique. So as you're running, say, "Aha, uh-huh, there, 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 there." Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, you play again. So, yeah, Kadong Kam is. Uh, I, I mean, as a strategist, uh, you know, life is all about strategizing, and these guys are teachers as well. So I listen to that music. They have seen a situation. They want to tell something about that situation, they just use uh, the song to tell us what they, w- they have seen. So that's why I, I really love that kind of music. And then the other music is country. So, ah. yeah. That's yeah. a vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, I'm here for country. Don't yes, see that I mean, for sure. Uh-huh. 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 They can't be. Uh-huh. 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 Go yeah. on, Ronnie. Uh, what happened you? Let's go on your fingers. I, you I'm t- telling you. You tell stories. And that's the thing. That, that's yeah, the yeah, thing. That's exactly. The thing, you know? Again, tell stories. Mm. Yes. yes. But Ronnie, well, how did you survive being a country musician? Uh, I also want them because to Because, no, no, he was, you know, he was not in the country. You see, that's why I've been hesitant to join this music thing. Because I also want other people to eat. And that's the thing. I can't be everywhere. Sibia, <laughs> <laughs> any country vibe? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. totally. Uh-huh. What? Of course. One, two, three, uh, enter. Ah, uh, you relax. <laughs> 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 I have serious questions to ask you before we uh, sing yeah. country song. Before we get into uh, the, the very last questions, uh, Prof, if yeah. uh, I, I see you have so much love for music. Yes. If you were to be an artist, what would be your trendy name? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, your AKA. LCM. Huh? LCM. Lowest common multiple. You can call it whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> LCM. LCM. Uh, you see? Ah, you LCM. See? Okay. Ah. Uh, what do you see? LCM. LCM. Yes. And how we used to find the LCM, you would uh, have like uh, like four. You f- four over two, then you cancel here. Uh, you get you know, four, <laughs> you know four over two is an improper fraction. Yes. That's how you could uh, you, would, uh, you, s- you could still get the LCM. Mark, Mark. There's LCM, let me say four, Listen, four Mark, plus Mark, two Mark. over two. Guys, Mark. I agree. I don't have a red pen. <laughs> Mark, you're, yeah. in, you're in front of a professor. Pro- well, professor, four plus two over two. So the LCM here will there, be there, two. There's nothing like four plus two over two. Mm-hmm. But, uh, That's how it would be. It would be. Stage name, trend name, LCM. 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 Yes. Okay. It would, it would make your work very easy. Yeah, but you can borrow it, Uncle Mark. You can change your... He's yeah. a very generous man. Yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well then, Mr. LCM. <laughs> um, a lot's been going on in uh, Kenya, as you've seen, and uh, we've had a lot of sentiments between here. You know how we do. We always compare between mm. Kenya and Uganda, and uh, a lot of times people are saying that uh, the Ugandan young people or the students of Uganda, the Gen Zs uh, of our country, will not uh, stand up to that level uh, to protest for what they believe in. Uh, what are your sentiments and your thoughts about, uh, in comparison, of course, uh, to the young people in Kenya and what's happening in Kenya and uh, to us here? Okay, uh, I'm glad you, s- you talked about my sentiments uh, because I am not a Gen Z person. I have not <laughs> lived in Kenya. I've not, okay, I've been to Kenya, but I've not lived there. But I also believe that there are different socio-economic conditions, uh, mm. different socio-political economic conditions that are going to come into play in every country. So I don't think we are Kenya. Mm. And I don't think the Ugandan young people are going to behave 
the way uh, the young people in Kenya uh, are to behave. We are, we are facing totally different things. Uh, yes, uh, economically, are we disempowered? That's very true. Uh, can we, are, are we approaching it differently? That's very, very true. And, uh, but also, uh, you cannot disregard the fact that uh, some people will try to say that, you know what, ah, yeah, no, if Kenyan uh, young people did this, we can do this, and mm -hmm. they can try, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have the same conditions uh, mm -hmm. I coming into play right now here. But at the same time, uh, uh, I still talk to my... Uh, uh, government. Uh, I mean, all of us, this is our government, right, in mm -hmm, this country, mm -hmm. that uh, we, we, we have to do something about uh, our e economic uh, kind of focus. We should do stop focusing solely on the uh, traditional economies. Mm -hmm. We should move to uh, disruptive innovation technology economies. That's where money is. Mm. And that's where the young people are placed. Everything they know is in that kind of space. So if we invested more money into that space, everyone will have something to do. Everyone will have some money coming in. Their socioeconomic conditions will be very, very different. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will not have these uh, external pressures really even being something for us to compare to. Wow. But how are you balancing, uh, you know, being involved in policy and also just uh, running a university? Mm. So I, I think uh, you don't have to separate the two. Okay. Uh, like, like I think Ronnie asked this question earlier, uh, what, what are we doing at Victoria? So w we make sure that uh, we walk the talk. Mm. If we are talking about practical education, don't just talk. Do it at Victoria University. Let the students experience it. Uh, if you are a journalist, for example, Victoria, you should be able to do your exams when you're even in Kanungu. Mm. You don't have to sit in VU's kind of classroom. So this is education anywhere, anytime. Because that's the real life. Yeah. Okay? Uh, you don't have to be confined in one space. You're not a prisoner. Mm. In real life, we are going to move, we are going to work, we are going to support people, we are going to do everything. So education should look for the client. Mm -hmm. Education should find you where you are, not the opposite. Mm -hmm. So the ivory tower tendency, as we know it, it is not going to work in this Gen Z economy, digital economy, AI-driven economy. Things have totally changed. Absolutely. So whatever we do must mirror everything we want to see in the country. Mm. So we just don't talk about it. Yeah. When we talk about instilling experiential learning in education, we should model it such that if they are saying, oh, is it working? Yeah, you come to Victoria University. Every student is working, is studying, but he's also working. Uh, digital, digital competencies, don't talk about them. Instill them in our students. Is it working? Yeah, you sample our students. Take them to any work you may, you may choose. They will show you that actually they are up there. Mm. All right? Uh, in t paying attention to the environment and how it is being degraded. Do they know something? Are they doing something about it? No, don't talk about it. Come to Victoria University and see how we do it. Yeah. So we help model policy mm. by doing things. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, time is, uh, our time is first spent and uh, we would love to have this conversation go on and on and on. If you have any questions, please feel free. Uh, Professor Lawrence Muganga is also a man who always would choose to take this conversation to the cyberspace. Right. So you could follow him on the socials and have your questions and sure enough they will be responded to. Just a but quick one. just before we yes. Just a quick one. Do you have a favorite student? <laughs> and who is he or she? Uh, I'm like a parent. Uh, but I do. Uh, I like I have uh, Isano uh, who works here. Uh, ah. one time I was so amazed he was uh, you remember the when the the, the president the president's trek he walked somewhere and somewhere very far so this guy was doing an exam i don't know who took his picture and he was doing an exam somewhere where he, they were trekking from i think even Richana was there at that, that, that time that picture made me feel great and uh, he became my favorite student he 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 he, he showed what real life looks like mm -hmm. and what education should actually look like mm -hmm. now, so now i know how to be a great student i'm yeah. just going to go back yeah. to our farm in urtoma <laughs> 
I enroll at the university, then as I'm doing, I take a photo. Mm-hmm. I will be one of the great seniors. You have changed, you have changed your mind. You're not going back to senior photo. Uh, no, 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 no. That arrangement needs to change, my friend. Uh, we must appreciate you, LCM. Ah, uh, sorry, uh, Professor. Uh, LCM works. <laughs> no. LCM. By the way, my mother doesn't know even the job I do, so LCM works. Oh, okay. LCM, better. So he said if he was to be an artist, that would be his name. Thank you very much for your time. He's been a guest on Meet the Boss this Thursday. Of course, uh, getting to the top of the hour is news in Luganda, keeping you up to date on what's happening in and around our country and more conversations on the morning suite.